Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8, and today I am going to review Astrobot. Leading up to the launch of Astrobot, I was just expecting a fun 3D platformer, but the game not only met my expectations, but exceeded them. And I can safely say for now, not only did I have fun with Astrobot, but it's now my favourite game of 2024 so far. Meaning with only three months left in the year, any game can surpass that. But we'll have to wait and see which game will surpass it. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? And just as a quick warning before we get into the review, this review does contain spoilers. So if you've not played Astrobot yet, watch this video at your own risk. Because I'm not taking responsibility if the game is spoiled for you. And with that being said, let's get into the review. For the gameplay, going into Astrobot, I was expecting a 3D platformer that plays out like Astro's Playroom. But booting up the game for the first time gave me a surprise of elements being borrowed from Super Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie. Such as how many of a collectible you need to have to reach that area, since Astrobot uses this kind of element with the different bots that you can collect throughout the game. Similar to how we have stars in Super Mario 64 and Jiggies in Banjo-Kazooie. The hub world does remind me of a mixture of Wario World from the GameCube and Nintendo Land from the Wii U. And the reason I get Wario World vibes from the hub world's design is because of the round structure and the four areas that lead off from the center. And the reason I feel like I'm reminded of Nintendo Land is because of the different collectibles that you can obtain for the bots throughout the game. Similar to how collectibles can decorate Nintendo Land area in Nintendo Land. The gameplay is great thanks to its creative level design and the use of power-ups, which some have been used more than once in a variety of levels, but each level the power-ups are used in are used in a different way, which does a great job in making sure that the game avoids being repetitive. While I may not have room to talk about all the power-ups, I would like to talk about some of my favourites. While only used in one level in the whole game, the mouse shrink ability was really fun. And it's actually an ability I've always wanted to see in a game. And I feel like this could be used as a template for an Ant-Man game at some point. The elephant suck ability does remind me of the cloud power-up from Super Mario Galaxy 2. The only reason why is because the elephant suck ability allows you to suck up different liquids which all have different behaviours, such as honey which can create bouncy platforms, ice can create ice rinks, green slime can create hedges, and cement can create concrete platforms. And the slow-mo watch, which the first game that came to mind when using the power-up was Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time. I really had fun with the end of Galaxy levels, where the levels play like the games that some of the bots come from, such as franchises I am familiar with, such as God of War, which allows Astro to, to throw the Leviathan Axe, Horizon lets Astro wield a bow, and Uncharted allows Astro to wield a pistol. As well as franchises I have no experience with, such as Ape Escape, which the level inspired by Ape Escape allows you to run around catching apes, and Lokoroko, which I don't have experience with Lokoroko either, but it does use motion controls to play, but I still had fun with the level though, and I do like the choices of games that they used for these types of levels, and I hope they do add more of them in future content updates. 
one complaint I've had throughout the PlayStation's life cycle is the underutilization of the DualSense controller's features, since most third-party games rarely use them, but Astrobot probably makes the best use of the controller's features. But how does Astrobot use them exactly? Astrobot allows you to tilt the controller to fly your dual speeder, climb with a monkey on your back, even though Astro's Playroom used that element before, and having the ability to feel what is going on within the environment, such as running around sprinkles in a dessert themed level and feeling every part as you repair your mothership. Not to forget that Astrobot has one of the best credit sequences I've played in a game in a long time. I mean, we did have that credit sequence in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, but I really love the credit sequence in Astrobot, since it does rely on an interactive credit sequence, which not that many games nowadays even use anymore. But Astrobot involves you smashing through red and yellow blocks, which represent the department that a particular member of the development team is a part of. And the PlayStation memory cards, which are not only used as save slots in the game, but are also used to credit the name of each developer that was involved with the game's development. When it comes to the graphics, Astrobot is exactly what you'd expect to look like. Even though realism is overdone in modern day gaming, Astrobot has a fair mix of cartoonish character design and realistic visuals. The visuals are full of life as well, such as the bot animals in the background which add plenty of detail to enjoy in the background, and the different objects such as the giant tree in the trunk of funk and a volcano having faces attached to them, which adds personality to the environment which not that many games do nowadays, but adding personality to the environment is what I enjoyed about Astrobot in terms of visuals. Even though those are just minor details, they are, they are really fun to look at. The character animations are well done as well, especially on the bots where each of them have character animations that stay true to the games that they are from, such as the Joker from Persona Bot zooming upwards like he does in the games. The Fall Guys Bot, which I wasn't really expecting to be there, it does stay true to Fall Guys in terms of character animations. And on the performance side of things, the game runs smoothly on the PS5. And since Astro Bot is on PS5 only, as of the recording of this video, I have no other platforms to compare side by side, but the frame rate works very well. While the loading times aren't quite there with Spider-Man 2, the way Astrobot makes up for that is by making the loading screen interactive, by allowing you to tilt your controller in either direction, which allows Astro to fly in the direction your controller's tilted. While Astrobot doesn't really get complex with its roster of characters, I'm mainly going to use this section in the game to talk about the bosses and the cameos from different PlayStation franchises, as well as third-party cameos I wasn't expecting to appear going into this game. The bosses in Astrobot are not only fun to fight, but also integrate the different power-ups used throughout the game quite well. Mighty Chewie involves fighting a gorilla in a city setting, which does remind me a lot of the earlier King Kong movies. Not Kong Skull Island, but you get the point. Wako Taco is where you fight a giant octopus within a beach setting with the frog punch ability, which I kind of get the vibes of a boxing match with this boss. Lady Venomara, which is set in a cave temple setting, where you have to avoid her tail attacks with the chicken jetpack power-up. Mechalion, which is probably my favourite boss in the whole game, takes place in a forest 
like area, with each wave being different, which makes the boss more enjoyable to fight, which Macallion uses its tongue to attack, and you have to use the slow-mo power-up to get inside its mouth. And Falcon McFly, where you fight on the belly of the boss, and you have to turn into a metal ball to hit its vulnerability spots. And even though this is more to do with the gameplay than the characters, I want to give Astrobot credit for how much effort was put into the designs of each boss. And now we're gonna move on from the bosses, and let's talk about the cameos. The cameos from Astrobot are exactly what you would expect from an Astrobot game, such as Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, Gran Turismo, Jack and Daxter, Little Big Planet, and the list goes on. These cameos aren't just quick appearances, then they are out of the picture for the rest of the game, because some of the bots add on to the gameplay as well, such as the Ape Escape level, the God of War level, where you play as Kratos, the Uncharted level, where you play as Nathan Drake, the Lokoroka level, and the Horizon level, where you play as Aelor. If there was one game that would have worked well as a type of level like this, it would have been Ghost of Tsushima, but I understand why they didn't do it because of like age rating constraints and stuff. There were also a lot of cameos in Astrobot that caught me by surprise as well, such as first parties, which haven't had games in a long time, such as Little Big Planet, Terraway, Parappa the Rapper, and Sly Cooper, which is great to see these franchises again, even though Invisimals, despite it being a PlayStation IP, was absent from the game, as well as third-party cameos which did catch me by surprise, such as Persona, Devil May Cry, Resident Evil, Octodad, which, if Octodad was in here, it would have made sense to include Bog Snacks, only because Bog Snacks did start off exclusive to the PlayStation. But back to it, other cameos include Metal Gear, Fall Guys, and Yakuza. It sucks that Square Enix wasn't involved, because Cloud, Sephiroth, and Sora could have appeared as bots in the game, but don't forget, it's not too late for Square Enix to get involved, because content updates could happen in the future. Astrobot didn't feel like a cameo fest over gameplay kind of situation. It actually feels like a, a celebration of PlayStation's history that balances the gameplay with the cameos by adding levels inspired by different PlayStation games. The music and sound design in Astrobot makes the game more immersive to play, and adds life into the game's world, which makes the game more enjoyable to play. The soundtrack perfectly matches the different levels within the game that you play through. Even the end of galaxy levels, such as Bot of War, where the track has Norse mythology vibes, which fits the level really well. And levels such as Trunk of Funk stand out to me because the sound design and the music. That's why I recommend playing the level with surround sound headphones. And the sound effects are well implemented as well, since sounds from the environments such as the wind sounds, the collecting coins, and crackling sounds of electricity, which can all be heard through the DualSense controller, but if you wear surround sound headphones, the sound comes through the headphones. And the reason that Astrobot is a game I recommend playing with surround sound headphones is because it makes the experience more immersive and enjoyable. And finally, to end the video, we're on to the story. While the story is simple, that's not what I came here for. I came here to enjoy myself without a complex story, and that is what exactly what I got. The story focuses more on rescuing bots and restoring the mothership, which does look a lot like a PS5 console as you explore the different galaxies and levels 
while searching for the missing bot and the parts of the mothership. Some of these worlds are inspired by hit franchises from PlayStation's 30 year history, and Astrobot is not a kind of game that you play for the story, but the fun of the different levels throughout the game. In games like Astrobot, story gets sidelined to the gameplay, and the different levels and cameos fueled by nostalgia. I wouldn't say it's a negative I have with Astrobot, because games like Super Mario Odyssey and Super Mario Bros. Wonder are masterpieces despite their stories not being that deep. The simple story gives the player a chance to focus on enjoying the unique levels that the game has to offer without really thinking up too much about the story. If you're looking for a game that doesn't focus on the story, Astrobot is a game I definitely recommend playing. I could safely say it's a game safe for children, despite the M-rated cameos, because there is no online connectivity or microtransactions to worry about, which is a good thing to look out for when considering buying this game for your children. Astrobot is a prime example on how to combine nostalgia, creativity, and immersive experiences into one package. It goes beyond being a simple 3D platforming game, offering well-designed levels which showcase what the PS5's technology can do by offering a variety of fun power-ups and probably the best use of the DualSense controller on the whole platform. The combination of realism and cartoonish character design makes the game stand out from any other on the market. And while the story is simple, the tribute to PlayStation's 30 year history integrated into the gameplay makes Astrobot more enjoyable to play. And that is why I give Astrobot the certified gold perk. And overall, I give Astrobot a 10 out of 10. I wasn't expecting to give it the certified gold perk in build up to release, but after playing Astrobot, I can easily say it deserves it. If you've come to Astrobot for the cameos, the well implemented sound design, and the well-made levels, Astrobot not only met my expectations, it exceeded them. It's not only a tribute to PlayStation for its 30th anniversary, but it's also a standout that it's a must-play for anyone who has a PlayStation 5. And Astrobot can easily be my favourite game of 2024 so far. And I can easily see this being a game of the year contender. So guys, what did you think of my review of Astrobot? Next on BB8 House Reviews, it's my annual review of Overwatch 2. It will take me a while to finish writing this video, but I will get it out as soon as I can. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one in the future. And I will see you all in a future video. BB8 out. <laughs>